Hey guys, welcome to a new show on the channel that we are calling Around the League. Now today, because we're doing baseball content this week, uh, I figure we would just do a tour uh, around all of the cities that host MLB teams and show you uh, where their stadiums are, kind of a history of maybe why they built it there, that sort of thing, and what surrounds the area. We're going to start in my kind of local metropolitan area, and that's Minneapolis. Uh, so if you're familiar with Minneapolis, ton of various kind of small suburbs around the side, but it's the Twin Cities area is separated between Minneapolis and St. Paul. Now, they're not directly next to each other uh, in the sense that you'd think right across the river, but they are uh, fairly close. You just follow I-94 here. Only one professional team plays in downtown St. Paul, and that's the Minnesota Wild. Uh, where my cursor is right here, that's the soccer stadium. But all of the other teams are going to play in Minneapolis. That's where I used to go to school. I used to live down by the University of St. Thomas. But here is downtown Minneapolis. Now you see towards the river, uh, the closest stadium you're going to get is U.S. Bank Stadium. That's where the Vikings play. But way over on the west or the northwestern side, really, is going to be Target Field. They built Target Field. It opened in 2010. Uh, it replaced the Metrodome as the home of the Twins. The Metrodome used to be on the footprint of where U.S. Bank Stadium is now, so they literally just moved across town uh, right next door across the interstate is the Target Center home of the Timberwolves. Not a ton around here. You're kind of on the fringe of downtown, but if you go just directly east, you're going to be in downtown Minneapolis there. So that is Target Field, home of the Twins. Now we're going to move to the next closest area or the next closest city that hosts an MLB team and that we're going to follow I-94 into Milwaukee. Now Miller Park is on the outskirts of Milwaukee over on this west end here. Very famous fan roof. Uh, it's basically shaped like a big baseball diamond here. Um, down here, this Health Air Field, this is where they used to play. This is Milwaukee County Stadium, the former home of the Brewers. They opened this, I believe, 2001. Massive glass windows on the outside. This roof does close like a fan here. Um, if I accidentally called it Miller Park, Miller Park already, I do mean to call it American Family Field. You zoom out here, and in relation to the rest of Milwaukee, it is a ways away, not too far, um, but a ways outside of downtown that it is noticeable. Uh, the only team to play in downtown, of course, if I can find it here, are the Milwaukee Bucks. They play at the Fiserv Forum there. Then we continue down south uh, along Lake Michigan, over to Chicago. Now, Chicago has two MLB teams. Uh, this is the only sport that they have two teams. The first one is on the north side, and that is going to be up here at Wrigley Field. So, uh, very famous neighborhood surrounding Wrigley Field. Um, you have the apartments across the street with the bleachers on the top. You have it in both left and right field very small uh not a ton of upper deck seats it's very one level of a ballpark uh, but surrounded by a ton of neighborhood type areas uh kind of these smaller parts the less compact parts of chicago you move down toward downtown then uh and you'll have to pass through downtown to get to the south side and that is where guaranteed rate field is this is the home of the chicago white Sox. The exact opposite, a very large upper deck here, very skinny sections um, compared to some other ballparks, uh, but very steep ballpark here. It is surrounded kind of by the, the south side urban area. Uh, so you got tracks on one side, you got the interstate on the other. Very urban feel to guaranteed rate field. And it is, of course, right next to the footprint of where the old Comiskey Park used to be, basically the same lot. We move then over to Detroit. Detroit, of course, if you know your geography, is going to be on the opposite side of Lake Michigan, across Michigan, and just north of Canada. 
born and raised in South Detroit, you are from Windsor, Ontario. That is how geography works. Uh, Comerica Park is right in the sports district. So you have right next to it is Ford Field. This is the home of the Detroit Lions. And then just kitty corner across the freeway is going to be Little Caesars Arena. That's home of the Pistons and Red Wings. But Comerica Park faces south southeast opened in the year 2000 set up kind of on a a square grid system similar to ballparks like arizona um in the back here is going to be the ferris wheel area um not a ton of outfield seats it's mostly going to be uh just steep behind home plate here large scoreboard out in left field but Cool area, um, like I said, it's kind of the sports district of Detroit, just north of downtown. Then we're going to move into Ohio. Don't scream, uh, but the first one is going to be, actually, why don't we go all the way down to Cincinnati and then work our way up to Cleveland. So Cincinnati is gonna be way down here by the Kentucky border and right on the river, is going to be Great American Ballpark. Uh, distinct red seats, not a ton of ballparks have it. The only ones off the top of my head that I can think of are this and uh, Bush Stadium in St. Louis also has red seats here. Facing the river, another southeastern facing ballpark. Very cool view over right field onto the Ohio River and into Kentucky. Uh, one thing to note is the gap here. So since they have the ballpark facing away from downtown, they did add this gap in one of the sections where you can look through it and see downtown Cincinnati out here. Right next door is the Heritage Bank Center. Um, it's not home to any professional teams, but it is Cincinnati's arena. They don't have any arena teams that play in any major leagues. And then a few blocks to the west is going to be Paycor Stadium, home of the Bengals. They used to share together... Uh, Let's see, that was called Riverfront Stadium, and that was also in this river district here, but there is downtown Cincinnati there. And then just on the north side is TQL Stadium, home of FC Cincinnati. We'll move back to the top of Ohio now. Top of Ohio, we're going to find Cleveland right next to Lake Erie. Cleveland Sports District is separated into two areas here. Um, on the north side of downtown, right next to the lake, you're going to find First Energy Stadium, uh, home of the Browns. But then on the south side of town, right next to the basketball arena, Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse, home of the Cavaliers, is going to be Progressive Field, home of the Guardians, formerly the Indians. Similar design to what we saw in like Detroit with the left field scoreboard here. Um, mostly lower level. They do have an upper deck in the right field, but they are slowly getting rid of it as the years go on. It used to be significantly larger, and now they have kind of these... Oh, what did we do? Accidentally clicked on something there. Uh, but they have more of these uh, kind of fan experience areas. Bullpens directly in center field. And that is all for Cleveland there. Let's move over then to Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh is going to be the next closest city over in Pennsylvania. Now, Pittsburgh Sports District is going to be on the north side of the Three Rivers Point. Uh, so downtown Pittsburgh is set up on kind of this triangle. And north of that, across the Allegheny River, is going to be both Heinz Field, home of the Steelers, and PNC Park, home of the Pirates. Now, PNC Park, in my opinion, has the best view in any ballpark. It's got a direct line of sight across the Roberto Clemente Bridge into downtown Pittsburgh, one of the coolest skylines in the United States. Very unique feeling ballpark uh, with these kind of tower staircase areas. You see it both here and at Heinz Field. Um, the seats are blue, you can't really see it very well from this picture here, but that has always thrown me off given the fact that the Pirates are a black and yellow team. Right in between here used to be where Three Rivers Stadium stood. They hold, or That was the home stadium for both the Steelers and the Pirates up until the early 2000s. And then the only other sports venue in Pittsburgh is going to be PPG Paints Arena over here, home of the Penguins. 
Let's move our way up. The next closest ballpark in the direction that we're going to go is Toronto. So Toronto, of course, you cross Niagara Falls between Lake Erie and Lake Ontario. And right on the riverfront in this very, very large Canadian city, uh, you're going to find this very distinct white dome. Now, obviously, this is closed. This is a retractable dome uh, right next to not, I shouldn't say right next to, but very close to the lakefront uh, is the Rogers Center, home of the Toronto Blue Jays. You can see the support system. Um, that is where the ballpark retracts if the roof were to open. It's right next to CN Tower, the tallest building in Canada. And then if you kept going in this direction, you're going to run into Scotiabank Arena, home of the Raptors and the Maple Leafs. Moving on then, let's keep going all the way to the northeast, and the furthest northeast we can go is Baston. So uh, downtown Boston, they have built most of this on reclaimed land. So there's downtown Boston there. The only sports team that plays in downtown Boston, it, well, two of them actually, are going to be the Bruins and Celtics. They share TD Garden right there. Uh, but as you move rather further west, you're going to find Fenway Park here. Um, and I'm guessing this picture was taken before a concert. Um, so you can't really see the baseball field in its entirety there. But um, also red seats here. I forgot to mention that Fenway also has red seats except in the outfield. The Green Monster does have a number of seats here, but very unique footprint for a ballpark as it goes right against Lansdowne Street there. One of the more oblong ballparks in the league. And then, of course, the Patriots play all the way out in Foxborough, but we will check that out in our football version of this video. Moving down south then, our next closest is going to be Yankee Stadium in the Bronx. Now, New York City, you'll be familiar with this long, um, I shouldn't use that word on a YouTube video, but this shape here uh, is Manhattan. And north of Manhattan is going to be the Bronx. And that is where the Yankees have played, as their social media team will tell you, for 100 years. Now, Yankee Stadium is going to be up north of Harlem here across the Harlem River. And that is where they have rebuilt Yankee Stadium in 2009. Uh, very multi-leveled ballpark, very unique exterior reminiscent of the old one. And then, of course, right next door down, I believe it was on this side here, is where the Yankees used to play, the original Yankee Stadium. Then across kind of a number of rivers here, uh, if you go in kind of the East River Harbor area here, this is LaGuardia Airport. And across the airport, you're going to find City Field. This is the home of the Mets on Long Island. Um, they built this one the same year as the Yankees built theirs. It's built in kind of this triangle pattern to reminisce uh, the shape of Ebbets Field, which is where the Brooklyn Dodgers used to play. Um, but very nice ballpark. You see the Big Apple structure in center field, as well as the Shea Bridge, a very unique design element that they've added. Uh, but surrounding it is a ton of parking lot spaces, as well as the Arthur Ashe Stadium, home of the U.S. Open in tennis. Moving south again, we're going to run into Philadelphia. And Philadelphia has a sports di district on their south side, uh, and all three of their major stadiums, um, excluding soccer, of course, is going to be in this area here. Uh, this Lot H and Lot G area used to be where the Spectrum was, uh, home of their arena teams, but now their arena teams, those being the 76ers and Flyers, play at the Wells Fargo Center. Lincoln Financial Field, home of the Eagles, and right here is Citizens Bank Park. Also set up on kind of a square grid system. Um, so it looks kind of like an octagon, which is a cool shape you don't usually see in baseball here. But uh, very tiered. You see a lot of outfield seats and then kind of the, the center field bullpen area and the hedge center field batter's eye area there. We continue south. I believe our next arena to the south is going to be or I, I, not arena here, how about ballpark, is going to be Baltimore. 
Camden Yards is right off of downtown on the south side here. Um, you see, they actually feel a lot closer when you're there in person, but you see M&T Bank Stadium, home of the Ravens, and north of that is going to be Oriole Park at Camden Yards. This big black strip here is the warehouse uh, that you see in right field at Oriole Park at Camden Yards. Uh, you got the batter's eye in center here, the big upper deck in left field that circles around kind of this half horseshoe shape. Very nice ballpark. I have been there in person, but that's right off of downtown in Baltimore. Then we go to Washington. Washington, very unique town when it comes to finding places to build arenas. The only one really in downtown Washington is right here, that being Capital One Arena, home of the Wizards and the Capitals. This is the old RFK Stadium, which no longer exists, but that's where the Nationals started their play when they moved from Montreal. They now play right kind of near Audi Field in the Naval District. So Nationals Park there. Uh, very circular design to it that you don't often see nowadays in ballparks, um, but you kind of have all of your outfield entertainment there. And it's got kind of this direct view in the upper deck of the United States Capitol, which is 20 blocks or so away. Our next place we have to go is all the way down into Atlanta. Atlanta just built a new one. Their old one was in downtown Atlanta. That was Turner Field. Turner Field still exists, but now it's a college football stadium. Uh, this is downtown Atlanta. That is State Farm Arena, home of the Hawks. That is Mercedes-Benz Stadium, home of the Falcons. Uh, the old Turner Field, if I can find it here, is located just south of downtown. Um, like I said, now it's called Center Park Credit Union Stadium. It's a college football stadium, home of Georgia State. They moved originally from Fulton County Stadium, which is that parking lot there. That's why it's drawn out like that. Um, but they have now moved to the north, way north side, if I can find it here. In, I might actually have to search for it. Cobb County, Cobb County, Cobb County. And it is north on 75 here toward this Cumberland area. This is Truist Park. It faces southeast, uh, and they have built kind of this ballpark district around it. But this opened a few years back in 2017, I believe. Formerly SunTrust Park, now Truist Park. But they moved out of downtown Atlanta. They are the only team so far to do so. Then we move south. Let's stay on the east side and go all the way to Miami. Now, Miami used to play in the northern district of Miami in Miami Gardens. Miami Gardens, if I can find it. I can never remember how far north it is. Bear with me here while I find it. I believe it's still further north. There it is. Miami Gardens is way up here. So this is Hard Rock Stadium. Uh, that is the former Dolphins Stadium where the Marlins started play and won their two World Series. They have since moved all the way down to Miami in this neighborhood called Coral Gables. And over in this direction here, if I can find it, or rather Little Havana is more accurate. You're going to find Lone Depot Park obviously with the roof closed here. Uh, but this is way west, or not way west, but but directly west of downtown in the Cuban neighborhoods, um, surrounded by a ton of houses here. The only team to play in downtown Miami is the Miami Heat at the Caseya Center. Moving up then to Tampa, more specifically, St. Petersburg. This is the only team to play in St. Petersburg. This bay might not look as big to you uh, from this view, but this 
is enormous. It's about a 45 minute drive from Tampa all the way down to St. Petersburg. And the only team to play in St. Petersburg here at the Tropicana Field are the Rays. Kind of middle of nowhere when it comes to sports teams in Tampa. All of the other teams play in downtown Tampa or around downtown Tampa. Uh, Tropicana Field is the only venue way over in St. Petersburg there. Then we're going to move over to St. Louis. St. Louis, right on the eastern side of Missouri near the Illinois border. And right downtown, you can't miss it. It's going to be Bush Stadium right here. The old Bush Stadium was also right next door. Um, but they opened this, I think, 2006. Home of the Cardinals ever since. It's got a great view of the Gateway Arch over here. The only other team to play in downtown, or actually there's two of them now, uh, with City Park opening home of St. Louis City SC and the Enterprise Center, which is the home of the Blues. Um, up top here is the Dome, which is where the Rams used to play, currently the home of my St. Louis Battlehawks. Then we're going to move across the state directly to the west is going to be Kansas City. Now, Kansas City sits on the border of Kansas City and Missouri. And on the Missouri side, you are going to find somewhere over in this direction, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> I've been there. I should know where it's at. I might actually have to look for it here. We are going to find, there they are. They are southeast of downtown St. Louis, or excuse me, downtown Kansas City, and those are going to be Kauffman Stadium and Arrowhead Stadium. Um, Kauffman, obviously the home of the Royals, Facing northeast, not a ton of ballparks do that. Um, you see the fountains in center field there and the pools, as well as the massive scoreboard. Almost all of the seats at Kaufman are going to be behind home plate, whereas across the parking lot is going to be Geha Field at Arrowhead, or G-E-H-A Field at Arrowhead, home of the Chiefs. Then we move down to Texas. First, we're going to go to Houston. Directly south of Kansas City, near the ocean, is going to be this massive, massive city called Houston. The largest footprint city in the United States, I believe. Um, and right downtown, if you can ever find downtown Houston, is going to be this ballpark, which has a roof on it in this picture. This is Minute Maid Park, home of the Astros. Uh, the roof folds over itself kind of like that. They built it as part of Union Station, just right off the edge of downtown there. Um, across the freeway, you're going to see Shell Energy Stadium, home of the Houston Dynamo, as well as the Toyota Center over here, which is the home of the Rockets. And then, if you really want to do some soul searching, and if I can find it here, one of these... That's not important. Never mind. I was going to find you guys a fun building, but that's okay. We're going to move from Houston all the way up to the Dallas area now. Um, now, of course, most of Dallas's teams now play in Arlington. So just west of Dallas is going to be Irving. If you keep going, you're going to find Arlington. And then you look for the big toaster. Now, the toaster is going to be AT&T Stadium, home of the Rangers, or excuse me, rather, home of the Cowboys. And directly east of that is going to be Globe Life Field, which is under construction in this picture, but that is home of the Rangers. Uh, their former home is right north of that. That is now Choctaw Stadium, home of the Arlington Renegades in the XFL. It is also a football stadium now, but right between the two, like I said, is Globe Life Field, this kind of parallelogram looking, I don't even know how you want to describe it. Kind of looks like a, a grill, genuinely, like a, like a dad grilling on the barbecue. Anyways, we're going to go up to 
Colorado and go to Denver. Denver, you're going to find the downtown circled by the South Platte River here. On the west side is going to be Empower Field at Mile High. Just to the east of that, a little ways, is going to be the former Pepsi Center, now known as Ball Arena. And then on the north side of downtown, you're going to find Coors Field. Coors Field faces directly north. It's got this very unique, um, awkward looking but cool looking center field bleacher area. And then of course the landscape area as the batter's eye. Very tall fences in right field. Very small uh, upper deck that they have since removed the very top of but that is Coors Field there. Then we move over to Arizona. Across the four corners and into Phoenix. One of the few teams to actually play in downtown Phoenix. You're going to find this big warehouse looking thing called Chase Field. Now this is also set up on a square grid system. This was one of the first to do it. Opened in 1998, home of the Diamondbacks. Uh, that is a retractable dome. It does open up. Immediately west of that, you're going to find the Footprint Center, home of the Phoenix Suns. But that is right smack on the south edge of downtown Phoenix. We're going to move directly west then into San Diego, the southern westmost-ish, if that's a word, uh, team in the MLB, the only team professionally to play in San Diego. Uh, they play at Petco Park. That is going to be right downtown in San Diego, faces north as well. Uh, it's got this very unique center field area. Um, fans can watch in the park across the street. There's also this little beach area below, kind of next to the bullpens here. And then, of course, the team store building, the Western Supply Metal Company building that they built the whole stadium around and fit it into the ballpark as well. They used to play at a stadium called Qualcomm, which, if I remember where it's at here, it doesn't exist anymore, and I might actually have to look up where it's at because I don't quite remember. Let me look it up real quick. We are now looking for a Snap Dragon Stadium. And that is up north here. So this empty lot that is now home to Snapdragon Stadium, this big circle here used to be uh, Jack Murphy or Qualcomm Stadium. That was the home of the Padres. And the San Diego Chargers uh, was recently demolished to make way for the smaller Snapdragon Stadium. But that is way north of downtown San Diego. Moving up the coast, we go into L.A. And the closest stadium to San Diego is going to be Anaheim. So on the eastern side of Los Angeles is Anaheim and you're going to look for Disneyland first of all if you can find it but then way over here is going to be Angel Stadium was built in the 60s you can kind of see the footprint of what used to be a completely enclosed stadium they ripped it apart in the 90s after the Rams left and have now refitted it as a modern baseball stadium very famous canyon structure in left center field, bullpens in left field, and then the grandstand in right field. Also to note here, where is the giant angel ball caps just shy of the home plate entrance? And then out here, you're going to find the Angel Stadium sign. Oh, I lied to you. Over here is going to be the big A, the Angel Stadium sign. Um, kind of right next door is Anaheim's other team, and that is the Anaheim Ducks, who play at the Honda Center. If you find downtown Los Angeles, which might take you a while, it's a big city. I might have lied about Houston being the biggest. I think Los Angeles might hold the cake there. Um, but you can't really tell on here. They act are actually further away than they seem on here because of the hills. But just north of downtown Los Angeles is going to be a big hill called the Chavez Ravine. And at the very top 
is going to be Dodger Stadium. So one thing to note is you enter from the top of the stadium. This is a huge hill and you enter from the top level and work your way down because it's built into the side of said hill. Now I mentioned in a past video, I wish they'd do something with the outfield because when I was there just a few years ago, they didn't have this section in the outfield. They now do. Uh, so I was corrected by a friend of mine um, who is a Dodgers fan. So of course he would recognize that, that they have since done something with center field in this Dodger area here. Very large stadium, by far the largest stadium in the MLB. They've played there since 1962. We're going to work our way north to Northern California before circling back down south for a very specific reason. And we are going to go all the way up first to San Francisco. San Francisco is going to sit on that finger next to San Francisco Bay. And just shy of downtown to the south, you're going to find Oracle Park right next to Mission Bay. This is uh, McCovey Cove. They built it right next to the ocean. Miracle they don't have flooding, um, but very unique horseshoe shape, similar to something like Baltimore, uh, but you're going to have that wall right there, uh, which leads directly to the ocean. Now, one thing to note is now just south across Mission Bay on Pier 48 is going to be the Chase Center, the new home of the Golden State Warriors. Then we're going to move across the bay. This is the Bay Bridge here, and that's going to lead into Oakland. Now, as of me recording this video, they still do play there. And this is Oakland's last professional sports team. All of the teams played in the same general area, and that is going to be over here. If you follow the Interstate 880, you're going to find the Arena District or the Coliseum District. Now, this is the Oakland Alameda County Coliseum. I think it's currently, as of me recording this, called like the Ring Central Coliseum. You see Mount Davis in center field. That was a huge expansion that the Raiders requested in the 90s in order to bring them back from Los Angeles. The Raiders have played here on two separate occasions, uh, but as of me recording this, is currently only home to the Oakland Athletics. Of course, this was the former Oracle Arena, now just Oakland Arena, which is the former home of the Warriors. But the reason I bring that up is because we are now under the knowledge that the Athletics are going to move across the Sierra Madres to Las Vegas in the next few years to a new stadium. And so Las Vegas has built this sports district right off the strip. So let's find the strip here. Uh down by the airport. This is Las Vegas Boulevard, if you're familiar with how that's set up. Now, the first arena that was built here, right by the Park MGM, uh, was T-Mobile Arena. Now, this is the home of the Vegas Golden Knights. And then south of that, down here, by Mandalay Bay, you're going to find Allegiant Stadium, home of the Raiders. So the Raiders are succeeded in moving from Oakland by the Athletics, and the Athletics are moving next to In-N-Out Burger. Fun fact, this lot here, which is surrounded by Palm Center Drive, Polaris Avenue, Dean Martin Drive, and the freeway on the south called Tropicana Avenue, this is going to be the future home of the Las Vegas Athletics. So if you're watching this in the future and they have decided to just call themselves the Vegas Athletics, I'm sorry, this is outdated. And last but not least, the last team, I believe, let me just double check the map, make sure we didn't forget anybody. We probably did forget somebody, but that's okay. The last team is going to be Seattle. Go to downtown Seattle and you're going to find a very, very big stadium called Lumen Field, and just south of that is going to be a smaller stadium called T-Mobile Park. T-Mobile Park's unique because the roof doesn't cover the walls. It doesn't enclose the stadium the way that other roofs do. Um, obviously, it is in partial form right now. I'm guessing this is in the middle of them opening it or closing it. But the two teams play right next to each other. The old Kingdom was also in this area, and now they are joined in actual downtown Seattle 
next to the Space Needle is going to be Climate Pledge Arena. That is the home of the Seattle Kraken. So that is all for baseball ballparks and stadiums. Thank you for sticking through this video. If you want to know more about stadiums or if you're interested in more content on this channel, let me know and I will do my best to get to it in due time. But that's all I have for now. In the bottom right hand of your corner is going to be more baseball content, but we will see you very, very soon.